in fact, the void goes slightly further because whilst adaptation is a linear progression through life, the void is starts with death and hopefully ends with a life. So, when the end of the film is actually when the story starts, and I'm exiting the garden, but I'll carry on this thought. So the end is where one of these things should normally start. So it's it's a very much a, a behind the scenes look about the thoughts and philosophies that surface during the planning process. And these, on their own, help to appreciate, help to help people to appreciate the film through a film that shows how films are made, or a life showing how life is made. And when it's made into a film or a, or a game all on its own, it really makes you question the bound, what the boundaries of the medium should be, whether we can just how much we can put into actual entertainment that we could then play around with it's uh, odd um, so so how they actually tie together uh, I, I, I like echoing this with reincarnation, that's the first feeling that I had lots of people have had theories of how the void works out and Olo's getting attacked, I'm not entirely sure by who so lots of people have had theories but my main one has been some sort of reincarnation you'd imagine reincarnation You'd probably take it as instantaneous, uh, judging by common knowledge, uh, understanding. It's not really knowledge, is it? So you die, and if the void is to be believed, then you go through all sorts of challenges after you die. And if you overcome them, then another person will have a life. That could be a completely different person. It could be the reincarnation of you. You could be feeding yourself and giving yourself a new life through that and it works because with our understanding it's accepted that we have no memory of our past life uh, that, that ties together with other stuff too like um, if you're a mother who gives a life to a child then you could bypass this process all the arduous void business Listen to the revelation, young one, and don't be tempted. Follow the true path, and you'll be glorified alongside all the righteous ones. And the secrets of being will reveal themselves to you. We've heard that quite a few times. Anyway, here's Patriarch. We have... He has been one of the friendliest. Besides Montgolfier, who has taken the role of, of a mentor, and actually given us some, some advice. Patriarch has given us a huge amount of advice. And now, we have to fight him. He, he's been nothing but nice, but here we go. How could this have happened? What could have gone wrong? Maybe it's a mistake. Perhaps you've been afraid, slandered. Everything has turned against you. And nobody wants to believe in your innocence, right? Speak. I will listen to your excuses. Don't want to talk? I can guess why. The sisters have tricked you, right? You don't want to betray them. That's why you are silent. Oh, what have you done, young one? Prepare for the execution. I don't recommend you to run away. Better resist. The fighting skills will turn useful when you become one of us. Oh, Patriarch is really understanding. That's a bit painful. He knows that we... That this is just how we've done it, and he's accepted us. All the way along, no matter what we've done, he's accepted what we've done. And now that it's come to this, he's accepting this as well. He can't go down without a fight, however. That's just not in the brother's nature, for whatever reason. Maybe it's part of their taboo. But in that case, he's offering to basically use him as practice for the fight ahead. It's best for us to resist. He wants us to succeed, but he's got no choice at the moment. I mean, he didn't have to 
Pfizer, did he? Anyway, I'm going to stock up on Emerald here because I haven't played this fight in quite a while, but it shouldn't be too hard. I mean, he's quite a... The friendlier ones tend to be a bit on the gentler side. Let's go. Violet. Vibrant. Chameleon of colors. Mysterious tail. Lair of the arcane. Come to my call. Aid in my vengeance. Battling a hideous, wicked, unfamiliar foe. Help me. By lies and deceit, the one who challenges my righteousness shall die. The one who watched me in hope of exposing my weakness be blind. His color shall fail. His hammer shall fall. His voice shall quiver. Rapture of wilderness, chaos of maelstroms, bone-breaking laughter, rider of the vortex's edge, open to the heart of thy lowly servant. To the righteous will of the seeker of thine guidance, heed. Meet blood with blood, taboo breaker. Bind. Crushing flesh, twisting mind, constrict. Feed your thirst. Bury him under heel. Oh, look at him. It took him quite a while to actually work out how to track us, didn't it? He's a little bit... Uh... He just chases us around. He's surprisingly fast, really. His vulnerability is Azure speed, of course, so it's a bit odd. Our main defense against him is the agility of youth. It's all very fitting, as he hobbles about in his wheelchair, waving his crutch around. I mean, what did you expect from this fight? Most things work, things actually home into this one, so uh, that's all effective. It's the best thing to do since you can use it and forget about it, whether you use Tumbleweed or Owl, or if you screw up completely and just end up painting on him. And that's his attack. He uh, tries to attack you with his crutch and most of the time fails. That's the only way he can hit you, he can't run you over. So it's incredibly hard to get hit by Patriarch. Making this fight probably one of the easiest. Triumphator is obviously a good contender. But if you got to his third stage and managed to sit around for a while, as I've just shown you, you can end up with a little bit of trouble. His wheels seem to disappear a lot quicker than most do. Oh, I feel like I've rung the doorbell of an old man's house and I'm just legging into the bushes. Oh god! Oh, that's not pleasant. Okay. So yeah, I haven't shown off many practical applications of haste. Warden may have been useful, may have been not. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what to believe anymore, but it doesn't seem to be the case. Now I'm going to try some... Uh, what's this one called? Sleeper, I think. They're basically timed grenades, I think I've mentioned, but I haven't actually used them properly. They're impossible to use, you see. I missed it even on him. And he's really the only person that you can use this on with any chance of being effective. And in order to use it effectively, you need to stand right next to the enormous boss and wait for it to explode right underneath him so uh, that is the most useless glitch glitch glyph sorry uh, this phrase so just other standard affair I'm just trying to get his second wheel off and see what the third wheel actually has to do whether he gains any new abilities I mean I can't really see what he could do he could throw the crutch at you like a spear. Oh, what was that? Oh, I um, forgot about that. He, he throws some sort of spinning disc. He's lobbing his banners at us. That's the only time he does it in this fight. I, I don't really know. I've, I've never seen it before. There are a lot of things that I haven't quite experienced. This is unpleasant. Manly thighs. <laughs> he actually managed to get a hit off on me. Melee hit. 
So yeah, he could chuck his crutch at us like a spear. Ooh, a good one would be if he sucked our head into his bizarre chest orifice and just munched on it. That would be both horrifying and the best representation of old man grossing out occasion. I mean, aside from that, I suppose you could get crushed in between him and his wheelchair, but that does not even bear thinking about. So I'm going to keep on using...